Today we're going to be talking about the war in Europe and North Africa. We haven't talked much about the fighting in World War II yet, so now is the time. Let's start by talking about the Battle of Britain. We already talked a little bit about this earlier, but we should probably review. The Battle of Britain happened in 1940. Germans had controlled most of Europe by late summer of 1940, and Germany made a plan to sweep away its final enemy, which was Britain. This was codenamed Operation Selian. The goal was to win control of the skies over the English Channel, then launch an army invasion so from the French coast without fear of an air attack. On July 10th, the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, began attacking convoy ships in the English Channel in order to draw British planes into battle. The Luftwaffe ended up losing twice as many planes, 600, as the Royal Air Force, which was the British. So they switched tactics. Germany started targeting British airfields. This was effective with heavy losses of planes and men. In response, the Royal Air Force started to bomb Berlin. Hitler was furious and then ordered the Luftwaffe to bomb London. This became known as the Blitz. 500 people were killed on September 7th, but the Royal Air Force began to rebuild its airfields and strength. The Blitz lasted until May 16, 1941. London and other cities were bombed nightly. But the British were successful for a few reasons. The German planes, for one, had to fly home frequently to refuel, and the British had a radar system which enabled them to detect incoming planes. Here's a few pictures of what the Blitz looked like. Okay, the Battle of Atlantic actually happened in the ocean, and it lasted for most of the war. Um, the goal was to control the supply route to Britain. The United States was a big supplier of ships, planes, and arms to the Allies, but they had to get them across the Atlantic, and that was the challenge. What happened was the Allies decided to use merchant ships traveling in convoys uh, or in groups, and then they would have them protected by small warships and sometimes aircraft. Um, Germany, in response, used submarines, or U-boats, as they were sometimes still known, in what they called wolf packs uh, to attack British and Allied merchant ships. Wolf packs would be a group of submarines that would congregate after spotting a ship so that as many U-boats as possible could join the attack. The British used sonar to locate submarines underneath the water, and the U-boats were pretty successful the first three years of the war. In 1942, they claimed an average of 96 ships a month. The Allies fought back with new equipment and weapons, and escort ships were outfitted with radar so they could detect U-boats on the surface, forcing subs to attack from underwater, which was harder. They also had new aircraft with a longer range that targeted U-boats in the middle of the Atlantic. And they cracked the secret code of the Germans, um, <clears throat> that were used by the U-boats and were able to reveal their positions. American shipyards built cargo ships faster than they could be sunk while Germany couldn't keep up with the need for new subs. So the Allies had control of the Atlantic by 1944. Germany had lost two of every three subs. Now, the war was also fought in North Africa. If you remember, we talked about how in 1935, Italy had invaded Ethiopia. Um, and Egypt got a little bit nervous of Italy's plans to expand. And so re in reaction, Egypt allowed Britain to station large forces in their territory. Italy entered the war in June of 1940 by declaring war on Britain and France. The British were now faced with losing control of key shipping lanes in the Mediterranean. Italy attacked British forces, forces in Egypt, and Britain responded by launching successful attacks on Italy's um, African colonies of Libya, Ethiopia, and East Africa. Now, Hitler did not want his ally to lose, so he sent what were called the German Africa Corps to help, and they were led by Erwin Rommel, also known as the Desert Fox. Between 1940 and 1942, the Desert War went back and forth, but Africa troops were able to push the British Army back to the Egyptian border. General Bernard Montgomery was sent to lead the British troops. 
By the summer of 1942, both sides had strong defensive positions around the Egyptian town of El Alamein. The Africa Corps surrounded themselves with deep minefields and booby traps, and Rommel ends up returning to Germany absolutely exhausted. On October 23rd, uh, the British General Montgomery launched a massive attack with 230,000 troops and 1,230 tanks. Rommel returns from Germany to find his army in full retreat. In November, Allied landings in Morocco and Algeria trapped the Africa Corps and they surrendered in May of 1943. You can see here one of the um, <clears throat> weapons that they used, the Higgins boat. This was a landing craft vehicle personnel, meaning that they were able to land personnel and supplies in an efficient manner. Next, we've got Italy. Now, after North Africa had been liberated, Roosevelt and Churchill decided that they would target Italy next. Sicily was chosen as the first target to get the Axis out of the Mediterranean and to get Italy to think about surrendering. On July 10, 1943, the British Army under Bernard Montgomery and, U and the U.S. Army under General George Patton invaded. They landed near Gila, a town on the south central coast, and encountered tough resistance. The Allies then launched a diversionary attack on the town itself, which succeeded of clearing the town of enemy troops. Sicily was soon in the hands of the Allies. And you can see here this is Sicily, right off of Italy. So after the Allies captured si Sicily, most Italians wanted to end the war. Mussolini was forced to resign, and the new Italian leader signed a surrender treaty on September 3, 1943. Hitler found out about this treaty, and he took control of Italy. Fighting continued between Allied forces in Germany and Italy until the end of the war. But the Allies decided that that was okay. They wanted to keep a front open in Italy so they could divert German troops and deplete their supplies as they started to plan for D-Day. Next, we have the Battle of Stalingrad. We haven't talked much about what was happening with the Soviet Union, but that was another front where the Allied soldiers were fighting. Now, Hitler especially hated the Soviet Union and Stalin because of communism and the many Jews that lived in the Soviet Union. So he ordered an attack on Stalingrad, and because it was also a major transport hub with important factories and steelworks, it seemed to him to be the perfect city to attack. Leading the German attack was General Friedrich von Paulus. Uh, he decided to use a, the Blitzkrieg technique to invade the city with tanks, infantry, and Luftwaffe bombers. Over 40,000 civilians died on the first day of attack, which was August 23, 1942. The Russians were greatly outnumbered, and Germans held much of the city by late September, and most of the city ended up in rubble. But the Russians refused to give up. Stalin wanted them to defend his namesake city at any cost. Fighting actually became room by room rather than street by street, and the Soviet general told his soldiers, to act as their own general, just fight as best as they could in the ruins of the city. The Germans assumed that this would be a short battle, and they were thus unprepared for the Russian winter. In December of 1942, the Soviets launched a counterattack from both north and south of the city, and the Axis troops wanted to surrender. Von Paulus asked Hitler for permission to get out of Stalingrad, but Hitler refused, deciding to try and resupply the troops with fuel, food, and ammo by air. There weren't enough planes to carry the supplies. Um, planes attacked. There was freezing fog, etc., to prevent this from being a success. In January, the Soviets offered generous surrender terms, but Germans refused, despite the fact that soldiers were dying from frostbite, starvation, and disease. Von Paulus himself was captured on January 31st, and the Germans finally surrendered on February 2nd, 1943. Now we also have the Allied bombing of German cities, which went on for much of the war, from about 1942 to 1945. 
This was strategic bombing of rail, railways, harbors, uh, workers' housing, and industrial districts. Um, the goal? To destroy civilian morale and to destroy key industries. Um, the United States bombed German cities by day. The Royal Air Force of the British bombed by night. The outcome of this was basically to destroy a lot of German cities. There were many civilian deaths, um, but the goal to break German morale didn't really work, and the Allies were criticized for bombing civilian targets. Probably the most important battle of the war would be D-Day, because this was a major turning point. Now, between 1941 and June of 1944, most of the fighting in World War II took place in the Soviet Union and some in the Mediterranean for the European Front. In England, the Allies had spent two years planning an invasion of Europe to liberate France and have a base from which to attack Germany. Germans knew an invasion was coming, and thus they built the Atlantic Wall, which was a series of concrete fortresses, gun positions, and beaches with barbed wire, mines, and anti-tank anti -tank obstacles all the way from Norway to Spain. However, because it was such a long border and beach, it was hard to defend strongly at any single point. General, General Dwight D. Eisenhower was given the job of planning the invasion with American, British, and Canadian forces. It was codenamed Operation Overlord. He decided to invade Normandy, France, as it offered a direct way into the rest of France and the entire south coast of England could be used as a launch point. The plan was to land at five points along a 60-mile stretch of coast by sea or by air. They would use parachutes and gliders. Now, in order to outsmart the Germans, there were fake fuel and equipment dumps um, as well as landing craft and an airfield built in Kent, which was across the channel from a different French town called Calais, to fool Germans into thinking the invasion was heading there instead. You can see here some of the uh, pictures of the large invasion that took place. 700 ships, 110,000 Allied soldiers, 23,000 paratroopers, a lot of casualties. The attack happened on June 6th. The outcome was an Allied win. They were successful at getting 100, 150,000 troops into Normandy. Hitler thought another attack would come at Calais, so he held back reinforcements. The Allies also dominated the skies and annihilated German troops and tanks as they headed to Normandy. By the end of June, Eisenhower had 850,000 men and 150,000 vehicles ashore. The impact of this was that the Allies were able to take the beaches and to retake France. Germany now faced a war on two fronts. Finally, let's talk about the Battle of the Bulge, which happened the end of 1944 into early 1945. By the end of 1944, Germany was running out of resources and Americans thought they would probably surrender before New Year's. Hitler instead because he's never one to give up, launched a major offensive on December 16th that was a total surprise. In Ardennes Forest in Belgium, the Germans were able to break through a thinly held American mines and created a bulge in these Allied lines. Germans put more men and resources into this battle than they did in attacking France. Individual Americans, however, began to resist and the surrounded troops held out until they were relieved by fresh troops. Throughout the Ardennes, the GIs dug in and refused to give up. By the end of the month, the Germans were on the defensive and they were retreating. This led to the end of the war. Germany never again was on the offensive.